Welcome everyone, I'm Zerachiel and I'm going to be giving you a fast, efficient tutorial on the basics of working with the Unwrap UVW modifier in 3ds Max. This video is going to be broken down into seven sections, selection parameters, parameters, map parameters, UV space, selection modes, mapping, and rendered UVW template. Unwrapping is a huge part of creating great textures for your objects. Very tedious and not at all exciting to look at, UVs often get thrown to the wayside, but they are your best tools for getting your textures right and making texturing as easy and fluid as possible. So how does the UVW map work? Well essentially, the UVW map tells the computer how to map a 2D image onto a 3D object. So think of it as, you have to take a road trip and you need a map to guide you on how to get there. So your UVW is the map you are creating for the computer to read. The very first thing you'll need to do is apply an Unwrap UVW modifier onto your object. Drop down the modifier list and find your Unwrap UVW and apply it. Now you'll be able to view all the unwrapping options available to you. Section 1, Selection Parameters. The first thing you'll want to understand is making selections on your mesh. This function is the same as when you're not in an unwrapped UVW modifier. 1 selects vertices, 2 selects edges, and 3 selects faces. Note that you will not be able to select borders or elements with the numbered hotkeys like you can in an editable poly. Once you've made a selection, we can use the plus and minus buttons to either increase or decrease the size of our selection by every similar vertex, edge, or face adjacent to the one we have selected. You'll also see the ring and loop options, which function to sell, select all edges either vertically or horizontally respectively. Note that this is a function specifically for edge selection. Next we have the ignore backfacing and select by element options. Ignore backfacing serves to disable the ability to click on polygons that have their backs facing us. Select element allows us to select any individual object not attached through geometry with one click. This can be done either with vertices, edges, or faces. Section 2, Parameters. Within Parameters, we'll find the Edit button. This serves to open our UVW map and display it on a 2D plane. We'll come back to explore that window a little bit more in a minute. Also within Parameters are the Aesthetic Display options. Under Display, you will find Show Seam, which enables or disables manually created seams in the viewport, and Show Map Seam, which enables or disables generated seams in the viewport. Thick and Thin Seam options simply change how thick or thin visually the seams are. Section 3, Map Parameters. Under Map Parameters, we can find all the tools to help us map and create the UVW we are aiming to make. Imagine each option as a projection onto your object. That projection will take your 3D model and interpret its geometry into the 2D plane. Therefore, when using these selections, you want to make sure you pick the button that best conforms to the shape you're working with. Below that, you'll see options to align your shape projections. This simply uses the X, Y, and Z axis of your 3D program to turn and position your shapes according to an axis. Uh, best Align will allow the computer to select the direction it thinks will work best for your object. Fit sizes your current selection directly into the 0 to 1 space on your UVW, and Center takes the center of your entire selection and places it directly in the middle of your 0 to 1 space on the UVW map. Also below that, you'll find Seam Editing options. These are important buttons that allow you to manually edit the UVW seams of your object. While Edit Seams is enabled, Clicking will add a seam and alt clicking will remove a seam. Point to point seams allow you to click and drag your seams across your mesh with a visual guide. Edge select to seams allows you to convert your currently selected edges and make those into seams for your object. Lastly, Expand Face Selection to Seams allows you to select one face and then expand your selection to adjacent faces until it finds seams that you've created. Note that this only stops at custom-made seams and not generated ones. 
Section 4, UV space. Earlier I spoke about 0 to 1 space in UVs, and this is a very important concept because putting UVs outside the 0 to 1 space simply ends up breaking your UVs, and oftentimes programs will have trouble using your object if it breaks the 0 to 1 space. Now, what is the 0 to 1 area? It's defined by the checkered area and also the thicker dark black lines that create a square in your UVW map. You will want to keep all of your UVs within this area. You can also tile your U0 to 1 space by going to the Options button and enabling Tile Bitmap and increase the amount of tiles. This option is good for visual clarity when working with a lot of shapes on the same screen. However, do take note that when you leave the original 0 to 1 space, you will be tiling that same texture onto the piece of your shape that is extended into the tiled area. Section 5, Selection Modes. Selection modes are also available in the Edit UVW window. It's important to note that while changing your selection mode in the Edit window will also change your Viewport Selection option, your Select Element options are separate. This means you can have Select Element on in your Editor window and not in your Viewport, and vice versa. In the Edit window, you'll also find the Snap button. This button is extremely important for snapping your vertices of a selection to another vertex instead of having to manually move it and place it yourself. Read for quick placement of shapes. Your UVW window is an important tool in your kit to getting efficient unwrapping. This menu allows you to convert any vertex, edge, or face selection and convert it into any of the others. Section 6, Mapping. One of the most important things to utilize during unwrapping is the actual mapping functions. Pelt mapping is going to be your best friend for oddly shaped geometry. Pelt mapping grabs the edges of the shape of your choosing and stretches them outward, along with the relax tool allowing for an evenly spaced UV that provides next to no stretching that a standard shape projection would create. Relaxing is another extremely important tool you'll be using often. Relaxing any UVs slowly restores its shape according to the geometry of the object. Basically, it just means you're letting the computer reduce stretching and defects in your mapping. Relaxing by face angles is the option you're going to want to choose most often because it works best about 90% of the time. Uh, amount increases the strength of your relax, while increasing the stretch value allows the UVs to stretch and move as they grow and relax. Another valuable tool for quick generated mapping that works very well for objects with hard surfaces or flat surfaces is the normal mapping tool. This feature automatically generates UVs based on the prefabricated choice provided to you. Our main focus is probably going to be box mapping. This is a great start to an unwrap because box mapping automatically spaces out your shapes and does so with little to no map stretching or distortion. One great feature I wish I knew about sooner was the stitch tool. Stitching automatically snaps your selection to its adjacent UV and wells the edge. This makes organizing adjacent polygons 100 times faster than doing it manually. Section 7. Rendering your UV template. Once you've completed your unwrap and are satisfied with it, you'll have the option to render it. This is useful for editing textures since this will provide a great guideline in Photoshop or another photo editing program. Simply choose your render size and render the UV template and then save the image rendered. Thanks to everyone who watched this video and enjoyed or learned from any part of it. Next time I'll be covering proper mapping including filling the 0 to 1 space efficiently, ensuring matching texture resolution, and making UVs work for you. Feel free to follow me on any social media or check out my stream at twitch.tv slash to find my schedule and more information.